Hello and welcome back everyone. Today we begin the second chapter in our syllabus and this one's called business strategy. In this chapter we're going to learn how a business uses different techniques to plot a long-term course for growth and expansion and how it can formulate a long-term plan which it helps it to achieve its objectives. So it's going to be a lot of different techniques discussed and in the end what the answer that we'll learn is how a business then able to plot their future. What kind of future do they see and what are the actions they're going to have to take today in order to achieve that future that they seek. Now before we can get any further into this whole business strategy discussion we first need to understand two concepts. First of course the word strategy what that means and secondly tactics I come to tactics in a minute we'll start with strategy first now you would have played chess there are a lot of games other than chess that require strategy pretty much all sports and business and life so strategy requires some cunning thinking and it is something that needs to be clear it needs to be easy to understand it should be conveyed properly to everyone in the organization because if there's any ambiguity about where the business is headed what the objective is the following results are also going to be futile if you don't know where you're headed so strategy is very important because first of all this is a long-term business plan it's not something that you can change every two, four, six months. You make a plan and you stick with it. So this is your long term three, five, ten year plan that the business comes up with to achieve bigger growth. Now, strategy requires high resource availability. And when I say that, I mean that, of course, when you're going to plan to expand, to grow, and of course, you're going to need to buy things such as land. Uh, you're going to need machine, you're going to have to train workers, hire them, bring in capital. So you, whenever you're planning of expanding, you are definitely going to need a high availability of resources so that there, is, there are no stoppages halfway through your implementation of the strategy. Then a lot of businesses will choose a high risk strategy because it is associated with a high reward return. So if you go, there's a simple rule in finance. Higher the risk, higher the reward, lower the risk, lower the reward. And there's nothing wrong with taking low risk or high risk. It simply depends on what the business's objective is. And another reason why strategy is important to get it right is because it is not so easy to reverse. Strategy decisions are taken at the highest level and they're taken once and they want you, obviously you want to stick to it. And once you start implementing them, a three, five year tenure plan, it's not easy to just leave it halfway and just switch to another one. So getting it right is very important. But just having the right strategy is not enough. Because remember, this is just a long term plan where you're going to be in three, five, ten years. But you still need to know what actions you need to take today in order to get to that strategy that you have hashed up. So tactics are then your short term business actions, things that you have to do today in order to achieve that long-term plan. Now, tactics are good because for the workers, it sets out their deliverable tasks, meaning what are they responsible for doing? Are, if you're in the operations department, are you in the quality control department? Are you in the inventory management department? If you're marketing, are you looking at sales? Are you going to research? So every worker knows exactly what they are doing. And at the center of all this is that concept of management by objective that you would have seen in HR of AS. At the start of the year, business will have an objective. Let's say that's for growth, which is what we're looking at in this chapter. If you're thinking of growth, then obviously the business decides these objectives at the highest level being between the CEO and the department heads. But those objectives are implemented by the departments within that business. And within the department, they're individual workers. And MBO allows us to break down those objectives into individual worker tasks. And that's why tactics are important because they will tell the worker exactly what they need to do in order to achieve that long-term objective. Now, of course, support for strategy is what you require and these actions are what are supporting your strategy. So, for example, if you want to go for a, a new international market, 
you're going to have to change your marketing mix perhaps. So what kind of pricing decision are you going to take? Does that match our strategy? Are you going to make the right revenue from that pricing decision? How are the promotion techniques going to be implemented? So you have to make sure that whatever the strategy is, the tactics match it and whatever the tactics are, they are supporting the overall strategy. And at the end of it all, you want your workers to have a clear idea and for the business to know exactly what the workers are responsible for. So it sets out exactly who does what, when they'll be finished and when does the business start achieving its own objective. So it's a very close relationship between strategy and tactics. Without a clear idea of what your strategy is, you cannot come up with tactics. And without a proper implementation of your tactics, you will never be achieve your strategy. So things you do today, the tactics, if you get them right, only then will you be able to achieve your long-term strategy. That's how the businesses are looking at this. Now, strategic planning is a process that the business goes through in order to come up with its long-term strategy, which is we call our business strategy as well. And there are three fundamental ingredients that you require in order to come up with your strategic plan, which are your long-term objective, the strategies and the tactics that go with it. So all three of those need to be aligned for the business to have a clear idea of what we're doing today and where are we headed in the future. And the whole thing combined would then make the strategic planning process. Now this planning process is done at the highest level in any organization. So the CEOs, the chairman, the president, the department heads, the, high, the senior managers, all of those will be giving their input to the business when they're coming up with this long-term strategic plan. Now once this plan is made and everybody knows what they're doing, it will, it will provide a framework for coordination. So everybody knows that if you're going to plan a certain product, how is the marketing going to do its research? How is the information going to be conveyed to the operational department to produce? When is finance going to perform its costing? So all those processes are clearly defined and everybody knows exactly where they have to go and what sort of tasks do need to perform. And for the business, it gives them a clear idea of what are the responsibilities and how is every worker contributing towards this growth strategy. So you break down each worker's role, you make sure that they are fulfilling them by tracking their performance and then obviously giving them reward for the performance. The better the worker's performance is, the better the business's performance is going to be. And whether you're, whatever you're becoming up with strategies and tactics, the fundamentals of it will come uh, will come from your discussion on objectives. The business needs to first identify what exactly are we trying to do, looking at the internal and external environment, which we will discuss soon enough. Then the business figure out where do we want to be. And so once you know where exactly we are going, then you come up with the tactics and the strategies to support it along the way. Now, let me just show you this process of strategic planning through a concept that's probably easier for you to understand and hopefully this analogy will help you further to further understand what I'm trying to say when I'm talking about strategic planning. So let's assume that this is you and this represents your first day in school. So this is start of years for you and the screen box here indicates your future. Yeah, of course, you're in school, you want to do something with your life, you want to be somewhere, you want to achieve things. And perhaps one of your long term goal is to go to university, right? That's what you're working towards. Now, that's the strategy. Look, if I want to be a successful person, if I want to be a more learned person, if I want to learn new things, I need to get an education. So that's what I want to do. The objective is perhaps make money, perhaps learn more things, perhaps more philanthropy or whatever your objective is, one way of doing that, the strategy chosen is to go to university. Now, just coming up with a strategy, look, I'm going to go to university in the long term, is not enough. You know that between now, the first day of school, till the time you get to university, there are things along the way that you have to perform in order to get there. Now, you know that you're going to have to, of course, sit for your midterms, do well in them, then you're going to have to Come up, uh, go and sit for your AS exam and hopefully get A stars because all the academy has done such a wonderful job. And then there's going to be summer breaks or summer camps, maybe learning to write, learning to paint, uh, anything that you are interested in. 
and comes second year you know that you have to sign up for societies so that you're involved in more things make new friends then you know the biggest um, task perhaps of second year of school would be your uh, university application so sorting them out filling them in getting them across to universities all over the world and you have your midterms you have your marks and then eventually your eight weeks and then hopefully everything goes according to your plan you find yourself in the university that you want now all of these steps here so for the midterm you know that you got to study not just before the exam a little bit every day perhaps every week so those are the little tasks that you are completing to get your midterms right once that's done little tasks tactics to get this right so all of these stoppages then represent the tactics for you if you continue to do these things and if you follow the right path then you get your long-term strategy of getting to the university of your choice so strategy and tactics without having an idea of where you were heading you wouldn't know what you have to do to get there that's how the business is also looking at it and in the following videos let's break that down and hopefully by the end of this video you now have an understanding of what are the basics of and the importance of business strategy Hey there, if you like what you saw right now, head over to altacademy.org for access to content around six subjects with past papers, videos, revision guides, flashcards, and academic support. All of this is going to make sure that you're completely set for your A-levels. So I'll see you there on the platform.